Hey everyone, Justin Crumley here, as promised, back again with Cujo's Corner, and uh, I am not alone today, I got a special guest with me, my good buddy, Jacob Schneider. Jacob, go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody out there. You miss me, mother truckers? <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Uh, good to see everyone again. Um... You might remember the last video was on this channel. I was here. So we were doing MLB Marvel stuff. But I'm back. I'm yep. back. Oh, yeah. We were having some fun then. We're going to have some fun now. I'm just going to make sure my audio is coming in good. Alrighty, Everything's good. So, yeah, we got to... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. We got to... Uh, we're going to talk a little bit... Uh, Little, we're going to touch a little bit about the uh, recent Michigan news. Uh, we're not going to spend too much time on it because uh, the Detroit Lions are playing in the NFC Championship. Talk about a sentence I'd never thought I would say in a million years, but there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, we're already having fun here. So, But before we get into that, I do feel the need to kind of touch on the Harbaugh stuff for just a second. I, I, I mainly want to get your opinion on it, like... What do you think of it? Are you, you're, you're a Michigan fan. We're both Michigan fans. Are you surprised that he left? Really? Um, I've seen a lot. I've been seeing a lot of him and Belichick on traffic for head coaching. So that doesn't surprise me one bit. The only thing that's really good about this is it limits the chances of potentially Ben Johnson leaving or Aaron Glenn. Because we just, I remember last year we were having this conversation of trying to get him back. And then like a couple weeks later he was back. So not going to be easy this time around but but i'm not really surprised i was just hoping he didn't go to like seattle or something so you're I'm talking that, you're, you're talking harbaugh not going to seattle yes okay so uh, it, no he, he went to uh the well chargers. yeah he went to the chargers like, right yeah i knew that i, I was yeah I, I guess for me like i if you ask a buddy of mine um, I've been, I was telling him from the get go, I'm like, dude, hear me now, quote me later. Harbaugh is not going to be with this team next year. He has been flirting yeah. with the NFL for like the past three years. The first chance he gets to hop to an NFL team, he's going to take it. I, I knew it was coming. And I, I also said, I was like, dude, Sharon Moore is going to take over as their head coach. Hear me now, quote me later. Wait. And he did. Yeah, that, and didn't that just happen like yesterday? <laughs> yep. Yeah, they just named him the head coach. So, yeah, choice, it's it is. I I like Sharon more. Uh, he's young. He's a good recruiter. Um, I think uh, I think playoff access isn't going to be much of an issue because they are expanding the playoffs. So, I don't think making the playoffs. You never is, know. The Big Ten is getting bigger. It you is. Never know about that. Oh, it is. It is. Oregon, USC, Washington, and Washington, and someone. I forgot the other guy. UCLA? I, UCLA, yeah, is UCLA. Although I, I heard yeah. there was like some controversy there, like they they may move, they may not. I don't. Who knows? We'll we'll see. Yeah. Honestly, I, I I hope they do get UCLA. And while we're at it, go get Notre Dame, go get Stanford, make it the Big Twenty. Why not? You know, I mean, I. <laughs> why not? Why not? Way we're gonna beat the SEC. Dude, really, and I. I wanted to make it a point. That's why I kind of wanted to make it a point to get the, the hat that I'm wearing now. I know nobody could see it, but I got one of the national champion hats that the Wolverines yep. were wearing. I wanted to make sure I got that just because, like, with college football, man, you just never know. You just never know if we're going to be like Auburn, like we got our natty. Now we're going to go ahead and be irrelevant for, like, 10 years or whatever. Or if we're going to be... And I, I mean, I, I as a Michigan fan, obviously, I hope this ends up being a case. We end up being like the next Alabama or the next Georgia, which is a long shot. I'm just going to say it right now. That's that's a long yes. shot. Speaking of Alabama, they're not the only one that lost their head coach. Michigan's not the only one that lost their big time head coach. No, uh, Saban's gone too. Yeah, Saban retired. And how how awesome is it that we were the team to retire him? I think that there's yeah. nothing more fitting than for us to now take the throne. Obviously, like I just said, that's it a long like shot. Last year but when we got Aaron Rodgers out of the division. Right. Oh my God. It, I, yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's yeah. It is kind of equivalent. You know, you're you're just essentially popped into my head just now. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even think about it. That's awesome. That's true though. Yes. Yeah. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, Saban retired, and uh, the the. <sighs> 
Jesus, the guy we just beat in Washington. I can't. His name escapes me at the moment, but he ends up yeah, taking over. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget his name, but he I took over. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out because in Alabama, I, I feel like the Alabama crowd is so restless. They're going to be like the minute they lose to teams like Georgia or Florida, if they can't win the SEC consistently, like Nick Saban was winning it consistently, I like the fans are going to tear that dude apart. <laughs> they're gonna, they're, they're gonna want him gone. They're gonna be like, oh, he's yeah. not Nick Saban. Get him out of here." Um, yeah, but that's Alabama. Right, right. And I, God, do you, do we want to get into the other big head coaching change? I know you mentioned him already, but uh, Belichick's out as uh, the Pats head coach. Him and you know Kraft mutually parting ways. And oh, uh, speaking of that, the Pats just named a defensive coordinator. I don't remember who it was off the top of my head. Joe Barry? No. 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 Here, uh, let me... I'm going to look it up right now. But they just named a uh, defensive coordinator. I'm DeMarcus... Sorry. I'm sorry, I can resist. No, no. <laughs> uh, DeMarcus Culvington is their uh, defensive Never. coordinator. Uh, he was their uh, defensive line coach from... He's 34... His first hire under Gerard Mayo, he was there. So he was a coaching assistant in 2017, promoted to defensive line coach in 2020, and served as a defensive coordinator in last year's Senior Bowl. So, okay. Uh, kind of just goes in line with, like, uh, Gerard Mayo being the youngest coach in the uh, in the NFL as of right now. Um, yeah, I think that team just needs, like, an offense. Oh God, yeah, they they need a lot of things on offense, and and that's really the thing. It's like it's such a it's such a weird position to be in because like their defense is really good, their offense is. I mean, like I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It has the worst case of ED I've ever seen. It is it is like they couldn't score in a whorehouse. It's ridiculous how bad this team is, and. The worst part is, I don't know where to even begin. Like, I want to say quarterback, but I don't think a new quarterback is going to solve all the problems. There's no one to throw the ball to. Uh, they hardly have a run game. Their offensive line wasn't good. And I, you know, so it's uh, it's it's definitely going to be interesting to see who uh, Gerard Mayo brings in as an offensive coordinator. And I, uh, not to mention who the GM is going to be, because that's the next order of business right there is uh, the GM. Uh, well, I know it's not going to be the one, uh, the one guy from Detroit, because he was supposed to be the one going to Carolina, but he's, go he's not in that voting. So I imagine he's probably sticking around. Probably. Uh, the guy I... Name. No, the guy I wanted already uh, went to Washington. I want to say Washington. It was, uh, I think he was like an assistant general manager in San Francisco. I think it's like his, I forget what his name was. It was like Alex Perry or something. That was the guy I was hoping for. I don't remember his name either off the top of my head, but that was the guy I wanted. And the other names I have heard were not good. One of them was uh, the GM of the Vegas Raiders who originally wanted C.J. Stroud, which, hey, that sounds awesome. Then you figure out that he Looking hired... back at it. Right. Then he hired Josh McDaniels and, and took Josh McDaniels' word that Jimmy Garoppolo was actually a better option. I don't want that guy anywhere near my team. <laughs> no. And the other guy, and this is going to... Uh, Tennessee's GM... I know where this is going. Tennessee's GM that thought it was a good idea to trade A.J. Brown and handicap Mike Brable. That's the other name I've heard as a potential option. And I'm like... Please go to Seattle. I'm like, I yeah, that guy, yeah, he can go to... Yeah, I agree. He can I go to Seattle. Seattle. I don't want him anywhere near Detroit. I don't want him anywhere near New England. He can go to Seattle and ruin that team. Go ahead. I, I don't want him in New England. Anyone that thinks, like, like honestly thought, like, oh, we're going to get rid of A.J. Brown and take our chance on a rookie. Why? Why would you do that? Like, no. Oh, just, just not good. I don't know, though. We'll see. Uh, the Pats are clearly taking their time with it, which I think is 
probably the better move at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. But uh, no time for bad football and bad teams like mine. We're going to talk about good teams like the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, we have pretty much teased my audience for about ten and a half minutes straight about this game. So let's go ahead and uh, give them what they want. So I'm going to go ahead and I got my notes here. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, game so I can see what the line is because I had, last I saw it was San Francisco. I think it was San Francisco step under minus seven. I minus think. seven, yep. So it went up actually. It was, uh, or I guess it depends if uh, who you're betting on, but it was uh, San Francisco minus six and a half. Now it's San Francisco minus seven. ESPN's matchup predictor. I think, that's, I think that was with the Debo news. I think that was because of Debo. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think uh, it's fair to say that uh, ESPN has San Francisco winning this game at uh, 74.1% in the matchup predictor. So Detroit are heavy yep. underdogs going into this game. I think that's obvious. And I think going into this game, you and I both knew that was going to be the case. So first things first, yes. I want to ask you this. If they lose this game, where are you at? Like, I was talking to some friends for a little bit. I was under the assumption, and I think this has pretty much been just like a proven fact now, the Super Bowl window has just opened up. Like, this team has the roster to be able to compete for the Super Bowl, and I think they'll be able to give the 49ers a bit of a hard time like the Packers did a week ago. I think they're going to give um, CMC a hard time with a pass rush. And I think all this team really needs to be a Super Bowl contender is a semblance of a secondary. I love CJ. He's done really well. But the rest of the secondary has not been good this year at all. Not at all. So you definitely need to get some more pieces in that secondary. Yeah, I... I, I, I think the window has just opened. Yeah, I, I really couldn't have said it better myself, and I love how you opened it up with, I think the window is just open. So now you know just as well as I do how fast that window can shut. Look to the Buffalo Bills. Agreed. So uh, definitely some uncharted territory for the Lions here, and, and this isn't even an yeah. unfamiliar position for them. You also could look to teams like Indianapolis, Jacksonville, uh, it's a, it's a, it's very uncharted territory, but it's also really exciting. I mean, this is amazing, and I do have a team that I want to compare the Lions to, but we'll get to that later. I uh, mostly want to talk about the game at hand because um, this is going to be. Talk about the season itself, because I have some points I want to make about this season. Sure. Yeah. No. We'll 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 wrap about it. Um. Uh. We. Uh, so first and foremost, I I agree with the, pretty much everything you said. I wouldn't really change anything. Uh, I agree. Uh, I think the window is open. This is uncharted territory, and, and it's exciting. The Lions are uh, they're a good team. Not the most, probably, and I think you'll agree with me on this, I don't think they're the most talented team in, the, in playing right now. Yes. But they, they're tough. They play hard. And they are the little team that could. And remember that saying, because I'm going to be saying that a lot in this podcast, <laughs> especially when... I'm really excited to get to that comparison. So uh, I'll be saying that a lot, especially during that point. But so I was looking at some numbers before the game. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey. He is going to be a huge priority for the Lions. And let's just be honest here. In this postseason, the Lions have not done well against the run. Against uh, Kyron I Williams. I beg to differ, actually. Oh. Because they held up both. Rashad White and Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams has been a name I've heard a while as like one of the best running backs to come out of this uh, best rookie ru- running back, and we held them pretty well in that game. If my memory is correct, like we didn't, ha- we held them to not that many rushing yards. I'm gonna pull up the stats right here. Yeah, like, um, 13 carries for 61 yards. Like okay, like nothing. Well. When you factor in, it's actually 4.7 yards per carry. It's it's really not nothing, though. Um, and Rashad White, Chase Edmonds. Better than what, C- what, other, what he's been doing all year. Like, he's been one of the most consistent running backs in the league. Like, I think, and Rashad White, nine carries for 55. Like, that's nothing. Right, but see, you laid it out right there, the lack of carries. Do you think Christian McCaffrey's only going to get about 13 or nine carries in this game? 
Probably not. Yeah, I, I think he's. I think you're going to be seeing a lot of Christian McCaffrey in this game. And looking at these numbers here, allowing 4.7 yards per carry to Kyron Williams, 6.1 to Rashad White, 4.8 to Chase Edmonds. I think the Lions managed to to kind of put a Band-Aid on a bullet wound in that case. That's probably not the best way to put it. But like they, they kind of stopped the bleeding a little bit because those guys didn't run so much. Um I think with Christian, uh, Christian McCaffrey, you're going to see a little bit more of that. Um, I also, I yeah. Well, I also expect McCaffrey to be a factor in the passing game because last week on 12 targets, he had seven catches for 30 yards. Now, on the paper, that's not really that great, but that would mean that Brock Purdy is managing to get the ball out before he gets sacked, which... I'll be the first to admit, a pass yeah. rush is a and pass rush. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You also got to remember that this team is not fully healthy on the defensive side. Like, we're just getting James Houston back. That's like, true. playing for this game. That is so true. So that will help significantly. Yes. Yes. And I and we, we did have a conversation about that earlier in the year, uh, about the Lions deadline. I And I... For the most part, I stand by it. I did not care for their deadline. We can get into that more as we talk about the season, but I, I do think. Agree. But I do think I I do agree with you about James Houston coming back and that being a major asset for the pass rush. Um, that brings me to another key for the Lions. The main I think this is the main key for the Lions' victory. I think it's Jared Goff. I think Jared Goff has had a wonderful postseason. He's got five hundred and sixty. Yeah, he's got 564 yards, three touchdowns, a completion percentage of 74.3. He has just been on absolute fire. And I'll be the first to admit, I was a doubter of this guy. When the Lions first got him, I thought, oh, a placeholder quarterback. He's not going to be here that long. Her, her. I could not have I foreseen. I Right, right. I, I'm by no means unique in that regard. I know a lot of people were like, oh, God. I even know uh, one of my buddies went as far as to say, like, oh, golf is trash. <laughs> so, right, everybody was just kind of like, oh, Jared Goff's not that good. He he basically did what Tom Brady did and, uh, and just took all that criticism and was like, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and go and win a whole bunch of games, and I'm going to make you question if you want to bring me back or not. So it's it's I think he's the key to the Lions' victory here. Um Overall, another factor in this game is the Lions offense versus the 49ers defense. Because he touched upon it a little bit. Lions defense is not very good. So I think it's best for them to play into their strength, which is their offense. So over the year, over the season, and we can we can come back to this as we... Uh, actually, this might be a decent segue to talk about what you want to talk about for the season. So over the year, the Lions are fifth for points per game averaging 27.1, and we're third for yards per game. Counteract that with the 49ers defense, which is third in allowing points per game with only 17.5, and they were eighth in yards per game. They also had a top-five secondary, leading the league in interceptions of 22. Interceptions total. San Francisco. So I do think that's a key factor in this game here. And for the Lions... I think, and this goes against pretty much everything I believe in as far as like playing football goes. You got to take more risks on offense. You're gonna you're gonna see Dan Campbell go Dan Gamble mode. You're gonna see him take more risks on fourth down. I think I think that's the key here. I think you have to try to keep your defense off the field as much as possible because you're, you're, you laid it out best. Like your secondary is is not good. It's basically like Swiss cheese. There's a lot of holes in it. You got the you got uh, C.J. Gardner Johnson, who's a bright spot, but overall, yeah, yeah, their their secondary could use some work. Um, but yes, I think the key to the Lions' victory overall is their offense. I think Jared Goff is going to have to go hard in the paint. I think uh, I think overall a uh, a shootout if you will, is how the Lions win I, this game. I completely agree with that. Yep. So you I want... completely agree that this game is going to be an absolute shootout. Oh, um, oh you think it's going to be a shootout? I do believe... Yeah. 
Oh, I, I was saying that's the key. I heard that the Lions, um, there's like a whole bunch of Lions fans heading down there for this game. I think it was like 25% of that stadium to be filled oh. with Honolulu Blue. Hey, so, I, I'm, which is crazy. I'm all for it, man. I'm all for it. They are going to need all the help they can get, especially being heavy underdogs in this game. I mean, it's 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 going to be a fun game to watch. That's for sure. Um, I, is was there was there anything else you wanted to add about the game itself? Um, I think um, the thing that's going to be important, I think, as well on offense. You specifically talked about the offense. I think establishing a run game is going to be even more important because yes. this team has been one of the best rushing teams I've seen in a long time. Montgomery and Give, and I criticized it back in January. I wanted Williams back, and we had Swift, but they got even better this year with D. Montgomery and Give, which we'll talk about that later. But I think establishing a run game is going to help out as well. Oh, yeah. And I... And I it's easier said than done. Right, right, because San Francisco... Um, yeah, they got a nasty pass rush. Their defense really good, but no, I think you laid it out perfectly. I think Jameer Gibbs is a key factor as well. It's just, I mean, I guess that fits in with the offense in general, uh, establishing a run game. And David Montgomery has been great all year, so this is going to be a good game. And and if the Lions could score, hit them hard and fast like they did against LA, I think they have a shot at winning this game. I do. Uh, now, if I'm if I'm a betting man. And I'm just going to say it. I probably would take San Francisco just because I think Frisco is nine times out of ten is a better team. But, yeah, I, I you know, look, I'm going to bring this back around to what I was saying earlier. I The Lions could lose this game tomorrow. I won't be mad. I'd be like, you know what? This was a fun season. Neither will I. This was a fun season. The Lions had, they put on one of the best seasons for the fans in a long time. Um, and, and while I was, I wasn't like suffering with the other fans, I was celebrating championships with the Patriots. I do feel a bit of happiness for my hometown team. And I feel some gratitude for those fans who were sitting around and kind of suffering with this, this trash heap of a, of a team for a long time. I think it's, I think it's been a really good season overall. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. So with that said, that is the perfect Absolutely. that is the perfect segue into uh, what you wanted to touch upon. You wanted to see. You said you had some things to say about uh, about their season overall. Mm hmm. Because I think it's special to talk about. Like, it's been a year since we were on here, and I think a lot has happened. Not only for Detroit, but also New England. Like both teams <laughs> had a season and a half for both squads. Oh, yeah. No, that's... Since it's been like a year since you were on here, I think it's oh, kind man. of important to touch on both. Touch on. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. What do you want to get into first? You want to do important. You want to do the bad first? We can We can get the bad out of the way first. I. It's your call. I'm letting oh, you. Oh, okay. You, you go ahead. Dealer's choice, huh? All right. Well, I, I, I have always been a bad news first kind of guy, so let's let's get New England out of the way first. Uh, and then we can get into Detroit. Uh, yeah, I think New England season was a, a giant dumpster fire. It, it was like watching a slow motion train wreck in real time. And uh, I think if it came down to being tied to a chair with my eyes pried open, clockwork, or, clockwork orange style, forced to, forced to like watch the room. Or, or have to sit and watch even one game of this Patriot season, I'd probably go with the room. <laughs> Just because, like, I... This this team, like... God, I we, we touched upon it a little bit, but, like, their offense was just so bad. I mean, they just could not get anything going. Last year, they had somewhat of a run game. And I thought, okay, cool, they got an offensive coordinator... I guess that's a decent place we could start is, is coming into the season. I really thought the, the Patriots would be kind of like the Lions. You know, they'd be like that plucky team that could. Nobody really believed in them, which is kind of weird to think a Belichick team led in that kind of way. But nonetheless, um, I, I thought they'd come in and would surprise everybody. But no, Mac Jones turned out to be a pumpkin. 
and a, and a brat. Um, Bailey Zappi ended up taking over, and I, I'm sorry, I just don't see him as a long-term NFL starter, which is why I'm saying maybe they should just go quarterback in the draft, which we could get to in, in just a minute here. Um, but yeah, I... I don't want to put it all on Mac Jones because it really wasn't all on Mac Jones. I think a lot of it comes down to the the fact that they had their offensive line was just awful. It was a rotating door, revolving door. Excuse me. Um, they they didn't have much of uh, of a run game. Their they didn't have anything for receivers. Juju Smith Schuster turned out to be a big disappointment and. Overall, this season was just, uh, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was, it was ass. The season was just so ass. It was so much ass, I can't comprehend how much ass it was. It was so ass. So, <laughs> I, just wanted to, I just wanted to throw the word ass in there a million times, just because that's the best way I can and sum it up. And how I feel. <laughs> you know how many times I heard that? During this whole football season, I would, I would complain to my buddy, God, dude, watching the Patriots is... is pain. I'd rather get electrocuted. This is awful. And he was like, well, now you know how it feels to be a Lions fan. I'm like, Aah. I'm like, it's true. It's true. This is this, the same. I think, what, what did I say to you at some point in the season? I was like, stop the ride. I want to get off. <laughs> that was, that was me in a nutshell. I'm like, I'm done, dude. This season, this season cannot end soon enough. I'm so over this. <laughs> So, and I, I called it again. It, uh, I called it again. I was like, this is going to be Belichick's last year. There is no, not, I, I want to make this clear. I never said he was going to get fired. I never wanted to put it out there. I never said he was going to get fired. I was like, it's going to be a mutual parting of ways. There is no way Kraft is going to tolerate this. And there's no way he's going to want to be here for a rebuild. I just think Belichick, I, much like a lot of coaches, he got old. He got the game kind of passed him by a little bit, and now, I mean, shit, he might not even have a job anymore. So, yeah, I, the last... Well, what I heard, he might take, like, a year off and then just look for jobs in the very next year. Oh. Maybe. You know, I mean, it's definitely that's possible. What I, that's what I've been hearing. I've heard that, too. It's definitely possible. I think maybe that'd be best. You know, honestly, Belichick... I honestly think Belichick really could just call it a career. And I don't think anybody would look at him and, and be like, oh, you didn't get that Don Shula record, you failure. Because the guy is a first ballot Hall of Fame coach. He's one of three coaches to be in the 300 club. So I, I just, I, for me, it's just like, what, what, is, what does Belichick even have left to prove? I just don't think there's anything left for the guy. He's arguably the greatest coach to ever coach the game. Uh, and I... I I've never bought the notion. I'm like, ah, Bernie May Belichick. I don't, I don't care what Skip Bayless says. I, I've never bought that notion. I've always, I've always looked at that as like a, a symbiotic kind of relationship. It's a, it's a two way street. But yeah, I think you treat said the same thing. Yeah, no, I it, genuinely, and I agree with him. I agree. Like I've always thought that the Belichick. I've always thought like the best way I could sum up Belichick and Brady would be. Think of it like a parent raising a child. A parent raises a child. They show the child how to how to how the world works, how to interact with society, all that all that jazz. Then eventually there comes a point where the parent gets old, and in some cases their health starts to deteriorate, and then the child has to take care of the parent. That's kind of how I view the Bertie Belichick relationship. Belichick gave Bertie because think about it like this, and I'm not sure how many people remember this. Brady got injured in the game, the the 2001 AFC Championship game. Brady got injured, and there was an there was an honest chance that Bledsoe could have took his job back. So Bledsoe was the starting quarterback that year. Belichick still went, nah, I'm going with Brady. He did what nine out of ten coaches would not have done, and he went with Brady. So I think without without Belichick, there is no Brady, and without Brady, there is no Belichick. That's just where I'm at. I think it's a yin and yang kind of thing. I've always thought that. I still think that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go to my grave thinking that. You know, I, I there's I've read a lot of books about the Patriots. I've I've done a lot of like research on them as a whole, and I 
that's really how I've I've just come down to it. So I guess to sum it up, you know, uh, it had to end at some point. The evil dynasty, all dynasties come to an end. The Greek Empire came to an end. The Roman Empire did. So the Patriot Empire had to come to an end at some point. Um, I'm not mad. You know, we went for, what, 20 years, I think. I, I'd have to do a little more research on this, but I think, like, Pittsburgh was the last team to do something like that. So, San Francisco, Dallas, like, these were former dynasties of different decades, and the Pats got to be the dynasty of two different decades. So, I can't complain. I got to celebrate a lot of championships. I had fun, and I'm I'm looking forward to what Gerard Mayo and, and their eventual new GM bring to the table. I'm curious to see who they hire for an offensive coordinator and yeah, generally speaking, I'm looking forward to the future. Absolutely. I think you need to figure things out in this draft coming up. Yeah. I think this draft is extremely important for the future of the New England Patriots because if you don't get the guys completely right and if you don't um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, um, shoot. You don't put the pieces the the, put the pieces in play for a foundation to be a championship contending team. Something like that, yeah. That's where I was kind of going with it, but it wasn't the exact word I was looking for. But I cannot remember. <laughs> no, it's it, I, I, I get what you're remember. saying, and I could not agree more. And I, it, it's got me kind of develop. That's the word deve- damn, oh man, that yes, yes, I um. God, you hit on it. You hit that nail on the head. I That number three pick is very crucial to what they're going to have to do. And it's, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do. I, I would like them to, I don't know how much I, I don't, I, I don't know if Chicago is going to trade up or trade back at all. I don't think they will. Indications say that. They're probably going to trade Fields and go uh, Caleb Williams. Um, I, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Just don't give him Marvin Harrison. Like, hell no. Yeah. Don't. Well, see, that's that's come up for a possibility for the Pats. And I'm like, uh, what? I mean, he, the talent is there. I don't think it's a talent issue. It's a, okay, it's so. A, this is probably one of the better quarterback classes we're going right, to get. So right, right. I think well, that, if you don't take quarterback, then you're, then you're a fool. That's what, well, see, that's where I'm at. It's like, I because I, next year, the quarterback class is what, Quinn Ewers? And that's it? Like, you, I guess. You, yeah, like, and that, and that, and I mean, look what happened with Spencer Rattler. Like, that dude was said to be a, 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 a quarterback headliner, a draft headliner, whatever you want to call it. And, he ended up like turning into a, a pumpkin. So, who's to say that the same won't happen? I mean, it's highly unlikely. Quinn Ewers looks pretty legit, but still, I I agree with you. I think you got to take advantage of this deep quarterback class. And you, if if let's say Chicago takes Caleb Williams, they trade Fields, um, which could make things interesting depending on where he goes. Uh, but let, let's say they take Caleb Williams. And then Washington takes Drake May. Um, at that point, I think you got to go Jaden Daniels. I think he's like the third best quarterback in this class. I think McCaffrey would just be way too much of a reach at number three. He's kind of, I look at McCaffrey as like Trey Lance or Josh Allen. Like he's kind of a, an experimental. McCaffrey? Yeah, JJ. No, oh my God. McCarthy. Jesus. Oh my God. Why did I keep saying McCaffrey? Oh, my God. Bail. Bail on my part. I meant to say McCarthy. Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in there just so everybody can laugh at me. I, I'm, I'm totally okay yeah. with it. Like, McCarthy. McCarthy. Taking McCarthy at number three would be a major reach, in my opinion. Um, I look at I McCarthy agree. as, like, Trey Lance or Josh Allen. I think a team that is, like, developmental, maybe a, a developmental kind of guy. But I view J.J. McCarthy as a guy that will probably be there late first round, maybe in the second round. So if the Pats really wanted to go Marvin Harrison Jr. and then take a chance on J.J. being there in the late first round 
and then they they make a trade, they move up. I wouldn't hate it, but I I also it would it would it would be intriguing because it would be like one of those things. It's like okay, what's going to happen here? Because if JJ is meant to be a developmental guy, are you going to start him on day one, or are you going to sign like? You're gonna make a bid for Kirk Cousins, or you're gonna make a bid for Ryan Tannehill. You're gonna you're gonna sign a free agent quarterback and kind of have him placehold because I, I just, there, there's a million possibilities. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. You, you have to you have to take a quarterback at some point in this draft. Rather, it's with that number three pick, or they somehow find a way to slip in and get into the top half of the draft, top the back end of the first round. Which is, it's tough to say because they're, they're like I said, I don't know who their, uh, their GM's going to be. So there's a lot of potential there. There's a lot of wild cards, but yeah. So with that said, let's, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the Lions. I'm going to let you take the lead on it. Um, I guess, first of all, I seen a lot of people say that they were going to win the division and first of all you called that shit. I did I, I did I right <laughs> did thank you, you. That crap. Last time. <laughs> Absolutely give me that. my tacos <laughs> give me your tacos. yeah give me my tacos no, I, I was under the impression that I think it was going to be an interesting season like I I rode too high in Chicago a little bit I rode a little too high I let me pull these up. Cause I had these, like, back in, like, February. I'm going to pull this up real quick. Oh, you got receipts. I had, like, I know the NFC was, like, a, a whole, like, as a whole, it was pretty weak. Uh, I had them as, I had Detroit as winning the division, but I don't know. I felt like something was going to go wrong and all that. and I And that completely went away on opening night. That completely went away. Like, opening night against Kansas City. I don't even want to hear about the whole no Chris Jones, no Kelsey crap. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, like, no. no, they, they won they, that game fair and square. Yeah. It's not It's not the Lions' fault that everybody on, on Kansas City ate Domino's pizza and got their hands all greasy and couldn't catch a ball. It's not the Lions' fault. Darius freaking Tony. Yeah, that dude's a joke. <laughs> He's a joke. I'm and not then, even... I believe... And then the very next game, which uh, was Seattle, I freaking knew that, that something like that was going to happen. But it was another case where the freaking refs got in their own way again. Yeah, it was the... another one of those cases. And it happened a lot this year. I was going to say, that's got in their own way. a lot of that this year, yeah. In that um, Seattle game. Right. And that was probably our most brutal game because we lost Oh, Houston. I... I was. Johnson and like someone else. Oh yeah, no, that's fair. I was gonna say the Baltimore game was pretty brutal because I, I shut that one off like halfway through. I was like, I'm out. I'm gonna go outside, mow the lawn, listen to the Pats. It was. It was one we'll of those. Get to that. We'll get to that game. <laughs> it was. And then they had like a really good stretch where their rookies just decide, you know what, we're gonna ball out. Like I remember their injured list against Carolina was. The fattest list I think I have ever seen in my life, and they still dominated them. And we all thought Carolina was going to be that really good team. I honestly was high in the Carolina Panthers. I thought they were going to be able to get the job done, and I thought this was going to be a turning point. Boy, was I wrong. So they absolutely destroyed them against Bryce Young. And then there was that Ravens game. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did not watch that. No, game. I I that shut that one off. Like, yeah, I'm not watching that game. I shut that one off. And then two weeks later, I felt better because the Seahawks met the same fate, so I felt better. <laughs> and then I think the what the game where I had the biggest cause of alarm was our second trip to Chicago. Was our trip to Chicago? I think that was the game where I started to get really concerned. That was the game. This, w- wasn't that the game? Okay, so that that was that after they they beat Vegas. Yes, that was after. Was that, that was uh, week fourteen. Oh, I remember talking to my buddy about that because Jared Goff was on like a really bad streak at that point. He was kind of in a bad way. He was like throwing. And it started with their first trip against Chicago. 
Yeah, he was like throwing a and lot then of he picks. Shit against Green Bay. Yeah. And yeah, then Thanksgiving. It was New Orleans and then Chicago. Yeah, there was there was kind of that rough patch, which San Francisco also went through their own rough patch. Uh, I think I told you about that yesterday. If Debo doesn't finish his game, the uh, Lions' chances go up a little bit because every time Debo didn't finish a game, San Francisco lost. They lost that stretch of three games when Debo didn't finish. So there's something Take to consider. Decaf. Yeah, bite it. Bite it off. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I uh, the Lions though. Towards the end of the season, they woke up. I mean, they you just knew. It started in Denver. It started against Denver. Yes. See, I remember. I remember Which doubting I them. Picked, I did pick Denver for this game. To I did too. I think I picked Denver for that game. I did too, though. Like you weren't the only one. I was doubting them too. I was like, uh, I don't know, man. This is going to be tough. Denver looks. I mean, Denver was coming in. They were red hot. They were. They were winning. Seemed like they finally figured whatever was messing them up out, and they they just they turned on the burners. But then the Lions cooled them off, brought them back down to earth a little and bit, then abs- and then they just kicked their ass. Like, oh yeah, they they kicked the shit better, out of them. For lack of a better word, they kicked Denver's ass, which was they a did. sweet thing because I have relatives in Denver. Hey, so it's it sports, man. Ah, it's sports, man. That's and just the, and the very name next of the game week was. Probably the biggest week for a while, which was against Minnesota. Like, Mullins was tearing this defense apart, and that was concerning. But it didn't matter in the end. The Lions were able to win the NFC North for the first time since 1991. That's before I, wasn't I was even born. I, don't know I wasn't born either. Born no. At that point. No. So, yeah, it was a very special moment. I think I lost my voice after that. <laughs> and this, that wouldn't be the last time I would lose my voice this year. It, it got bad. But, no, I was just like, you know what? Just try to get proceeding, and then just I didn't care about the rest of the year. We did half of what we needed to do. And then Dallas showed up. Oh, my God. We can talk I about that game. Damn game. We can talk about it. I mean, it was definitely a blemish. It's frustrating. I, I want to so say, frustrating. Well, I, I want to come clean, because originally when that happened, I was talking to my buddy, and I was like, I don't know, man. It, it kind of seemed like Decker didn't. Now, I hadn't seen the picture or the video of him running to the ref, so I thought, I don't know, man. There might, there might be, that might have been a decent, that might have been a fair call. And he, and he showed me the video. He showed me the picture. I Instantly, I flipped. I was just like, oh, yeah, never mind. I I think the refs yeah, kind of boned you on really that one. Call. The refs, yeah, they that was a bad call. They I will say, I think that was half the battle because Goff, again, did not have a great game. The offense overall, not a great game. But Well, here's the problem. Dallas is one of the best defenses, had one of the best defenses in the league, so it was a tough battle from the beginning. Right. That was the other thing. No, that's fair. That's fair. So and I it, expected Goff to not be the best against a really good Dallas defense at home, where they've been undefeated. Yeah, I was just so going to you know, point I that totally out. Totally expected a bad game from Goff that day. I totally expected. Sure. It. No, that's fair. That's so fair. I was like, you know what? It's fine. I didn't watch the game until like the very end when I was stuck on ESPN watching the game, and I was just like, what the frick happened? Like. Didn't we, didn't we tie this game? Are we going to overtime? What the hell happened? I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. I think I was on with a buddy. We were on stream that night. So I didn't um, get to see it until like a few minutes later. And then I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. And then, the, and then I look at my Twitter and it blew up. And I'm like, oh, no. Did the refs screw this up again? And evidently they did. But no. Um... And then, of course, Minnesota, which uh, was dominant all fronts. And then we have the playoff game. This is where I want to talk about a little bit. Um, Ford Field. Holy shit. Yeah, they were. It was loud. Oh, they came through in these first two playoff games, for sure. Absolutely. Like, like they didn't have the hardest road, to be fair. Like, 
the Bucks weren't going to win that game last week. Like, no. let's be honest here. The Lions were favored big time in that they game. They were, yeah, like six points. But the Rams, I thought, we were, I thought it was going to be a much closer game. It was in the end. Oh, it was, yeah. Honest, I didn't think we won when they, when they <laughs> got the first down. I thought they won more. Because I didn't think, uh, I thought they had to get one more. I thought they had just, in, they got in just enough time to force the timeout till they would need one more first down to seal it. That didn't happen. And in the end, we both know that didn't happen. And I was so confused at the time. I was so confused. Like, we did absolutely what we set out to do. And I think, regardless of how tomorrow goes, I'm satisfied. Like, it'll hurt if we lose for, like, a few minutes. But I'm going to be extremely satisfied with how this year went. Sure. And I think the future is extremely bright. Um, and don't forget, are you actually going to the draft this year? Because re- remember where it is this year. It is. It's in Detroit. Um, it's, it's here at home. God, I guess. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what's going on. I, I could try. I mean, seriously, that might be something to think about. Maybe put some money away for. Um, but I... So the last thing I wanted to talk about was I had a comparison that I wanted to make with this Detroit Lions team. 2023-24 Detroit Lions. I've said this, I've said it earlier in this podcast. They're the kind of the plucky, they're just kind of the plucky team that could right now. Let's yeah. rewind the clock back to 2001-2002. Let's talk about Okay. Let's talk about the New England Patriots. Oh boy. The plucky team that could. Well, listen here. New England was 11 and 5 that year. Detroit 12 and 5. At one point they were also 11 and 5, so you could probably argue that they had similar records. They had similar paths in the playoffs. The Lions uh, they were a 3 seed, so they probably would now they should have gotten that 2 seed. Uh, the Pats got the 2 seed. Each team played previous Super Bowl champions in the second round. New England played Oakland. Detroit played Tampa, each of them hosting the divisional round. And both teams facing former dynasties in their respective championship games. (laughs) I'm not done yet. New England was 10-point underdogs in the AFC Championship against Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh respected them so little that apparently when New England showed up to the game, there was like packed bags by the door. Pittsburgh basically telling them, "We take you, we take you so like little. We don't take you serious at all. We're basically already packing our bags and getting ready for the Super Bowl." And they lost by seven. They were ten point favorites over New England. Detroit is seven and a half point favorites. It's favorites. I'm sorry, seven and a half point underdogs to San Francisco. And a lot of people. Huh? Oh, seven. Right. I'm sorry. There's seven. At the time I was taking the notes, it was seven and a half. Seven to the to the uh, to the 49ers. And a lot of people are counting the Lions out. Not that the 49ers are. I think it's important to note that I don't think the 49ers are going to take the approach that the Steelers did. I can't see the 49ers getting arrogant and just being like, oh. We don't take you serious at all. We're looking past you, Burr. Just because I think the I'd, I'd like to think the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan's a little more like grounded than that. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, like the and I, I made this comparison earlier. Jared Goff, Tom Brady. Uh, Goff was kind of like Brady in the sense that he took all the criticism that he had received from a lot of the fans and he just turned it into motivation. Now, Brady did that over the course of his career, not just that one year. He was still a, he was in his second year in the NFL, still trying to make his name. But, yeah, I just couldn't help but uh, make a few of those comparisons. I think New England at one point, a lot of people find it hard to believe, but at one point they were the plucky team that could. Nobody had them winning that game against the Rams in Super Bowl uh, uh, 36. Um, and I, I haven't seen one person that has the Lions going to the Super Bowl yet, so yeah, I just thought it was... I looked at the... Yeah, I looked at the game preview for tomorrow's game, and it was actually surprisingly split. 
which I was extremely surprised to see. It was very, it was like 50 50, although every 49er score had them winning by two scores, which could be entirely possible. But I was, I was looking at the game previews, I was just looking to see what they said about the scores. It was extremely split. Like, I was very surprised to see that because I expected everyone to just pick the 49ers. But that is not the case. And Interesting. From what you're telling me, from what I'm hearing right now, there's hope. Yeah. No, that that was well see, that was the main thing I wanted to do with that comparison. I wanted to hang everybody Lions hat on something. You can't let the numbers bog you down. You, the, the 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 odds are against you. The brick wall is there. Just run through it though. Yeah. Every single bit of criticism for this team has just been motivation. And I will say another thing regarding that game. I believe, since it's on Fox, they're going to have Kevin Burkhand and Greg Olson on the call. They are 0-3, I believe, with ha. them on the call. Who the, li- memory's correct. the Lions because or the 49ers? The Lions. Oh. The Lions. Oh. Well. They are 0-3 so far with that. Well, time it. First they time. Played, they, were Seat- they were in Seattle. They were Seattle, which they lost. By, I believe it was them on the call. And then I know it was the Ravens. They called the Ravens game, which we don't really have to talk about that. No. Because that game was so bad. It was pretty uh, bad. I'm going to make sure that I'm not looking like an idiot here. Yeah. Seattle game, Burkett, Burkhart, Greg Olson. Yep. We're on the call for that game. Um, Tampa. And then week seven was. Olsen and Burkhardt, we lost that game. And then what, what game was that? And then Thanksgiving was... That was, uh, that was Green Bay. Again as well. And we lost that game too. Oh, wow. Was there any game where they called where we won? Oh, jeez. I don't geez. think I... so. Oy. I just noticed it. Wow. I noticed that. And I just noticed I didn't. that because... I didn't notice that at all. Yep. That's that's and interesting. Oh no! And Olsen are on the call. Oh boy! Call for that game. Well, hey, first time for everything, right? Trying to break that streak, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. The only other game we lost. The only other two games we lost was Buck on the call, and the other one where was the Bears lost was Ammon and Schlereth on the call. Ah. Uh. So. I bring. The, I wanted to bring that to your attention because I thought it was an interesting stat. That's a yeah. It's an interesting it was little. Definitely a really interesting stat, and I think it's nice little tidbit. Important. And I think whenever we had Mike Tirico on the call, we were three and zero. Oh. Well, damn! He because wasn't available. He, they, they played <laughs> the first game. Yep. I said, well, damn! He wasn't available. <laughs> They, had, they were on the first game, and then they were on the Rams game, which was on NBC, and then the other game was also on NBC. So I think that could mean something, but I don't want I want to take it as like a superstition. I want to take that right now as like a superstition because I I just thought it would be something really interesting for sure, and I thought it would be something that I wanted to bring to your attention. Because I think it's something really interesting I found out. But we'll see how things go, of course. Hey, hey superstitions like, are you fine. You never know anything. We like superstitions. Anything can happen in this league. Oh, yeah. Any given Sunday. Any given Sunday. Uh, and, any... of course, one more thing I want to mention about the Lions is the draft. Because I think both of us were sitting on, on draft night the first two nights and thinking, what are we doing? <laughs> What are we doing? I will see. I I didn't mind the Christian Gonzalez pick for New England. I really like that pick. But no, no, I'm talking about the Lions in general. I was oh. talking about you. I was pissed off at you. Oh, right, right, right. I was right. Pissed off. Right. <laughs> oh, my bad. Uh, I was pissed off. Yeah, no, I Jameer Gibbs. I I'll be the first to admit. I I didn't like it initially, just because I'm I'm kind of one of those guys that's a little stingy with a first round pick, but. It's definitely worked out overall. I'm willing to take that one on the chin. He absolutely has. He's up for rookie of the year. Oh, he should be. Him and Laporta, which I was very happy with. That oh, Laporta nice. Pick. If CJ Stroud wasn't I was a very thing, happy with that pick. Uh, if CJ Stroud wasn't a thing, they'd probably they'd have a shot. But exactly. 
Yeah, I was it's... saying the same thing. If if Laporte, if Cedar Stroud didn't have the year he did, I imagine that Gibbs or Laporta won yeah. that rookie of the year. And of course, we have coach of the year as well, yep. where Campbell's up for that. And I think I mentioned to you before, the only other person I think could win it, and I wouldn't be that upset if they do, uh, Domenico Ryans out of Houston. Like, oh, yeah. I wouldn't be that mad if he won that. Because I think what he did for the Houston Texans was incredible, to say the very least. Absolutely. So if he were to win it, I wouldn't be upset. The other ones were Harbaugh, Shanahan, and just the fan team. And none of those guys deserve it. None. Like, we expected Cleveland to be pretty decent. Like, I didn't, but but that's just my that's just my take. We expected the 49ers to be good. We expected the Ravens to be good. Yep. And no one expected the Texans to be good. And no one expected the Lions to get this far. So that's my that's my thoughts on the whole thing. Absolutely. I think the whole talk died with the Seven Stefanski when they lost to the Texans. And honestly, that wild card round in general was crazy, to be honest with you. That was a wild, wild, wild card round in general, especially with Dallas losing. That made me happy. Oh, Even absolutely. if it was at the expense of Green Bay winning. <laughs> hey, you know, Dallas not advancing is happy. always a good thing. Um, I, think I, they also call, I think in that game they also called uh, ele- ineligible man downfield. I was like, uh-huh. I legitimately said, Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. <laughs> That's I funny. I said that. That is so, that, was great. Like, that is hilarious. I was nervous as hell, and I may have showered that to the heavens when I said that. I may have showered that, but honestly, uh, I was so happy when they did that. I was just like, Karma, and then they missed the extra point. As well, so that made that even better. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm just, I'm just happy where this season ends. And honestly, the month the 2024 has been a great year for Detroit sports in general. I'm not sure. Yeah. Fan. Oh Pirates yeah, well, yeah, team. yeah. The Red Wings are doing really good. The Pistons are trash. The Michigan State Spartans aren't very good as far as football goes. I don't think either uh, Michigan, Michigan State are doing much in basketball. I I haven't really been paying attention to that but um yeah i mean and you got then there's, and then we still have sports not really on there we have we have what and then we and then we have one sport that's not even active right now oh yeah baseball yeah we're we're kind of just Which waiting we're to that point and i'm yeah. really looking forward to that because from what i heard the tigers are getting a brand new scoreboard like oh. the scoreboard team completely replaced with nice. a full screen i i'll send you a picture oh that is it. yeah go for it, it for really sure cool. that and yeah that sounds I'm cool to seeing what it is. i for me i'm i'm curious to see where they go as far as like building up their team goes because now they got their they got their front office established they got scott harris as their vice president of baseball operations i think uh uh, like green, like greens. I, I forget what his name is. They got a like Jeff Greenberg, I think his name is for a GM. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, he's their GM. You still have uh, AJ Hinch as a manager. So Which they extended for a good bit of time, and I was happy. Yeah. With it. Oh, absolutely. Between him and Al Avila, I was like, good I God. I remember 2020. I was so skeptical about that. Dude, pickup. I was so skeptical at 2020, but I really so liked far, it. So good. Like this year was a massive improvement. Over AJ Hinch. From 2022. Like, I th- that team was horrible. I think AJ Hinch is a wonderful manager. I really do, and I and I enjoy the thought that they're kind of leaning into what where he wants to go more or less. Uh, I think Scott Harris, Jeff Greenberg, and him. I, I hope they do some good things because the Detroit Tigers. It's the, it's the NS. It's the a- a- AL Central. Anyone can win that damn division. Dude, yeah, really. I'm though. sorry, that division. Sucks. This division it is not good. Sucks. It is not good. It's always sucks. Yeah, they. It's yeah. Never been good. No, it's it's not it's not good at all. It's it's a and, joke. Uh, also, we got a new uh, head announcer on the call now for this team. And yeah, it's Jason Benetti out of Chicago. yeah Chicago. I heard about that. So That's really cool. They picked him up. It it, it is. Great. It just so makes you 
Well, it just makes you feel like a new era in in Tigers baseball is starting, you know, and it's it's exciting, you know, it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be a Tigers fan. No offense to uh, no offense to Matt Shepard, but he was not good. On the no, I, no offense to him, but not really a fan of him or never. Jack Morris. I I never liked Jack Morris either. I always thought he was I just. Want your, I still want Gibson gone. I'm yeah, he's go. yeah. I no don't care for him either. I, I'll admit, before we got Benetti, I wanted uh, Mario back. I liked Mario. I did too, but I was really happy with the news of Benetti. Yes, yeah, I like I like Jason Benetti, from a division rival, one who's in oh yeah stress right now. Yep. And like I said, it's, it's just a new voice for Tigers baseball. It's just an exciting. It, it's a nice time to be a Tigers fan. I think you know. And, it is. It is. Mark Conn is on the roster. He got some nice depth at the pitcher. I was hoping they would go after like a Japanese pitcher, but they didn't. So whatever. Yeah. Um, they did bring in Kenta Maeda, which I was happy about. They did bring in Jack Flaherty on a bit of an overpayment, and I think they brought in Shel- Shelby Miller. I believe they also picked up something like that. If my memory is correct, I would. I would be able to do more if I if I did some prep on the Tigers, but yeah, I know they've made yeah, some maybe like. We- Maybe we come back for opening day. Maybe we come Maybe. back for opening day. Yeah, why not? I, I mean, I'm, en- I'm enjoying this. Opening day is in a couple months. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Opening day is a couple months. Oh, but man. But right now, Detroit is focused on one thing and one thing only, the Super Bowl in Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. And you got to think as well, in Vegas, they're probably going to do pretty well because it's a domed area. Like, yeah. The cold is where this team does not do well in. Right. Well, that's kind of an advantage of being out in San Francisco this weekend is uh, the weather should be okay. That's also a bit of a thing in our favor. So this game, this game is going to be split. Like, I expected San Francisco to be the heavy, heavy favorite, and they are, but not as much as I expected. And I think it's like every team except for the NFC North is backing us to make it. Shit. Especially if you're in Seattle or L.A. Sounds good it's to me. Like the whole thing with the Ravens as well. I think they're the same way. Ah. Well, the Ravens would probably rather have an easier matchup. And... So I'm excited to see what happens in February. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, anywho, we've been we've been rapping about the Lions. We've uh, we've covered a lot. Jacob, it was great to have you on. Uh, it's always great to have a guest Can on. Back? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I had a blast. Definitely going to have to have you on more often. I think we crank some good content. Well, my mic was good this time. Oh, absolutely! It, it should be fine, man. I can I can do some uh, some tricks in my editing yeah, my process. Yeah, my mic was not good last time. No, nah, it's that's it's all good, man. I can my I mic can. My was so bad last time. I, I I was watching that video back. And I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm so quiet. Yeah, um, we can we can I can figure that out. I can I can do some uh, some post production, but uh. Anywho, I'm going to go ahead and uh, disconnect the call, and then I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Uh, yeah, uh, as always, great to have you on. Uh, was there anything you wanted to plug before you go? Um, well, I have, we've just been, uh, I remember last time we talked about Various Humans and that project. We do have a second project that is... Um, about finish it is a different take on the game we are doing and this April I have a senior game coming up so I'm going to cool. be working on that not fully finished just yet uh, it's nothing too major but I will keep you informed when that's finished but I got a lot of work to do awesome. but I can uh, find the very human to talk about that um, what's it called that, um, that game and of course I'll link you my socials yeah, for sure. Um, alrighty, man. Uh, till next time. It was great to have you on, and to everybody else that's listening, uh, go Lions! And as always, stay awesome. If you enjoyed this video from Cujo Productions, please consider subscribing. Check out my Red Bubble page for all my merch, and hit the bell icon so that you're notified for every time I upload a video. As always. Stay awesome, guys.